To finally solve the mystery of what led Frederick Everett to leave his family and go to sea, Rupert has come to the British Library. He's searching the archives for any newspaper references to his great-great-grandfather, the stockbroker Frederick Everett Sr. Now I'm looking for things about Frederick Everett. Here we go. Silver Mines of Norway, broker, Frederick Everett. Oh, so he's involved with, uh, Frederick Everett is the broker for this scheme of silver mining in Norway. And here in, uh, I think, 1862 is another reference to him dealing or brokering uh, gold mining in Wales. Um, here's another um, clipping about um, mentioning him. Charge of fraud against a stockbroker. <gasps> Yesterday, Mr. Frederick Everett, a stockbroker, again appeared before the Lord Mayor upon the summons which charged that he, on the 16th of July, 1867, unlawfully and knowingly, by certain false pretenses, caused one Mr. Francis Perry to accept a bill of exchange for £230 for the intent to defraud. Mm. So with, with intent to defraud. So, obviously, um, he um, was accused of selling bad um, stock. The newspaper article reveals that in 1868, Frederick Everett Sr. stood trial for fraud. He was accused of taking money from investors to buy shares, but never making the investments, and instead keeping the money for himself. Stockbroking in the city of London began in the late 17th century. By the 1850s, the London Stock Exchange was booming. The expanding British Empire had opened up a range of business opportunities for investors in often far-flung locations. But until the middle of the 19th century, stockbroking was largely unregulated. Investors were encouraged to direct their money into speculative schemes with little official oversight. Many investors fell victim to unscrupulous brokers. Finally, in the late 1850s, Ten years before Frederick Everett Sr.'s prosecution, the first fraud offences were introduced. But those offences could be very difficult to prove. The Lord Mayor said there was no case against Mr. Everett, and therefore he dismissed the summons. He's getting into, I suppose, the usual squeezes, um, stockbrokers and um, moneylenders and creditors and people got into, uh, which is people... Um, People um, wanting money back, probably not altogether honest, I don't know. But anyway, he got off. But despite Frederick Senior's acquittal, Rupert has found one further reference to his great-great-grandfather. The London Gazette, published by authority. The London Gazette is a journal which publishes official parliamentary and legal announcements. Frederick Everett. Frederick Everett of number 31 Becks... Bexley Road, Erith, in the county of Kent, and number 17 Royal Exchange, stockbroker, having been adjudged bankrupt. Oh, goodness. Bankrupt under a petition on the 31st day of December, 1868. Oh, no, so it didn't last very long at number 115 Piccadilly, did it? Is that 1860, 1868, um, when Frederick was five? Well, it doesn't look good. Uh, now I know of a little bit about Frederick Senior's stockbroking career. Must have been a lot of strain in the family during these, these times. Because with my own father, uh, during the stock exchange crashes of 1979 and the Wilson government, uh, we all had our ups and downs. And when you are in the city, uh, everything goes right up and right down. The fraud trial permanently tainted Frederick Senior's career, and in 1868 he was struck off by the stockbroking authorities and could never practice again. He'd lost his job and his livelihood, plunging his family into chaos. After the Everett's left Piccadilly, they spent the next 10 years moving from house to house. In 1878, at the age of 47, Frederick Everett Sr. died of TB, leaving behind a wife and six children. He had just 200 pounds to his name. Two years later, Frederick Jr. went to sea.
The whole thing seemed to be started by my great-great-grandfather, Fred Everett, a fraudulent gamester, rogue, stockbroker, living on chance, ripping people off left, right and centre. My great-grandfather, Fred, born in Piccadilly, ran away from a disastrous home. I love the story of his family, actually. It would be the kind of book I would love to read uh, about gorgeous, wiry, athletic, blue-eyed rebel Fred Everett. <laughs> um, and um, his son, Cyril, never seeing Fred and um, not knowing what happened to his mother, disappearing mother, and um, Nigeria. And uh, remember, Marcy, you are my lover. Then his son, who he never saw, all, the, all these broken relationships uh, are terribly uh, touching and uh, marvelous in a way that people get through all these things. Uh, it's extraordinary the resilience people have. Looking at um, five generations of the Everett family, you can see a kind of pinball um, effect happening. You know, the, the generation before you definitely influences your generation. Either you go with it or you react against it. It's like joining the dots, because I understand more about my father looking at his ancestors. And therefore, maybe I understand more about myself. <laughs>